not far from the place where Snoodleberg sits, past Gilda Manju, where the Fu River splits, if you travel by boat through the Valley of Goot, lies another small town at the end of your route. It's the village of Snoostein, where most people say if you visit there once, you're likely to stay. The Snoodles are friendly, the weather is pleasant, and if it's your birthday, they'll give you a present. Snoodle birthday to you! Thank you. And like most tales you hear, with a happy beginning that end on a note with you once again grinning, the middle may be a bit wistful and bleak for one Snoodle in Snoostein, of whom will now speak. <laughs> there once lived a step Snoodle, so pompous and vain, she had no acceptance for anything plain. It's not a long story, this poetic novella, starring one of her daughters who's named Snoodlerella. Child, I won't have that hairdo and pitiful dress. Any daughter of mine should be clad to impress. Straighten your glasses, fix that thing on your head. Just look at your sisters, the step Snoodle said. If you're to attend tonight's grand snoodle ball, which the king himself hosts on this first day of fall, I insist, for the sake of our good family name, you revise your appearance. Which is totally lame. <laughs> <laughs> Poor Snoodlerella, with her glasses and braces, uncontrollable hair and cumbersome graces, I wish I were pretty, she said, feeling blue. But I'll never look like my two sisters do. Totally true. <laughs> Regardless, she bellowed, and in turn, the house shook. There's got to be something we can do with your looks. I've hired a berry of keen expertise who employs woodland creatures with cosmetic degrees. Now go to your room, she said, quite severe. And wait there until they all arrive here. <laughs> <laughs> so poor Snoodlerella went off to her room, feeling ugly and lonely and sad, I presume. Do you think I'm pretty? She asked her stuffed bear. I want to be pretty. It just isn't fair. I want to be noticed, she told her plush dove. I want to be treasured and cherished and loved. But she didn't feel pretty. And tired of trying, she laid down in bed and just started crying. <laughs> She wept on her pillow an hour or more, till by and by came a soft knock on her door. Hello? Asked the woman, or should I say Barry, in a voice that was kind and gentle and merry. Are you Snoodlerella? Though she knew it was her. I am your godmother. Pleased to meet you, I'm sure. My step Snoodle told me, she said with self-pity, that you and your ducks will make me look pretty. Absolutely we will. And the ducks added, <laughs> Climb up in this chair, close your eyes and sit back. First came the styling. With skill and with ease, those ducks and godmother brought her hair to its knees. And then came the facial. With yogurt and cactus, oh, this fashion team had plenty of practice. Next came the makeup, the finest cosmetics. No doubt that these ducks have fine-tuned aesthetics. And finally, wardrobe. The clothes make the girl. Most experts agree in the high fashion world. And when they had finished, most girls know the feeling. Full dramatic effect requires revealing. Is that me? She asked them. I look really different. She said as she wondered where the other girl went. 
Where was that snoodle with glasses and braces, uncontrollable hair and cumbersome graces? Time's up! Step Snoodle yelled as she barged in the room. Our carriage is here, about done, I presume? Then she let out a scream, oh! as loud as she could, and declared with a gasp. Oh, she looks pretty good, but of course. Well. Her godmother added as she packed up her gear. My work only lasts until midnight, my dear. Once the cuckoo strikes twelve, no matter the place. You'll return to your old clothes, hairstyle, and face. With that Snoodlerella, her step Snoodle and all, climbed into the carriage and rode off to the ball. And what a ball it was! The whole town came to dance. Would you happen to know the Roomba by chance? I'm not sure I do, but I'll give it a try. She replied to the knight, though a little bit shy. So on to the dance floor, Snoodlerella and Knight went stepping and swaying to her sister's delight. What? We're standing here at the lab. Good evening, ladies. I'll go get some punch. She polkaed and twisted, and tangoed and samba. She waltzed and she two-stepped and shimmied and salsaed. Hula'd and limboed and congaed and shuffled. She jived and she square danced and cha cha and hustled. With all that exertion, she needed some punch. A girl can get thirsty from dancing so much. Hi! <sighs> Hello again, ladies. I. Have an early morning meeting. Good evening. <sighs> Alone at the punch bowl, she grabbed a cool drink. As she sipped from her cup, she started to think. I guess looking different can cause quite a stir. <laughs> Am I beautiful? Really? She asked, still not sure. I still don't feel pretty. Then the clock chimed above. I still don't feel cherished, or nurtured, or loved. Again, there she stood, with glasses and braces, uncontrollable hair and cumbersome graces. So back to herself in that hall, all alone, she set down her cup and turned to go home. Excuse me, young lady. The voice asked. If I might, with permission, of course, have the last dance tonight? With me? She asked, startled, as she turned to the voice. You must be mistaken. I'm an awfully poor choice. Who told you you're awful? He asked. How do you know? Can't you see for yourself? The whole world tells me so. Then onto the dance floor walked the king as he said, Would you like to, my child, hear what I think instead? Then the hall filled with music. As the king took her hand, she asked, Your majesty? Please, I, I don't understand. I think you're beautiful, the king said as he smiled. I treasure you deeply. You're lovely, my child. I think you're beautiful. Your hair and your braces, your glasses and clothes, your cumbersome graces, and many more traits, which I could speak of. There's nothing about you I don't truly love. You're kind and you're honest. You're funny and smart. 
You're really quite charming. You have a good heart. Your Majesty? She asked as a tear came in view. I'd like to believe you. Is that really true? Of course it is true. Every word that I say. Daughter, I am the king, and I made you that way. I delight in your beauty. You're wonderfully made. I knew you before Earth's foundation was laid. You're precious to me, every hair on your head. Daughter, hear and believe. The Snoodle King said. Then the music grew soft and came to an end when the cuckoos above struck twelve once again. She smiled as she stood in that hall all alone. I'm beautiful, she said, and turned to go home. Now to end on a note with you once again grinning from this lyrical tale with a happy beginning, whose middle was wistful and sad to recall, you must hear what happened ever after the ball. If ever Step Snoodle or her two sisters groused about the style of her hair or an ill-fitting blouse, Snoodlerella, she'd shrug and remember one thing, that one special night when she danced with the king.